So now we welcome in our senior NBA insider, Adrian Wojnarowski. And well, there's so many questions, but I want to know how the Nets are handling this situation with Kyrie, and of course, how it all came together with the Harden trade this week. And Maria, Kyrie Irving, I was told, was eager to play uh, tomorrow night, debut potentially with James Harden and, and of course, Kevin Durant. Uh, but ultimately, it was decided, listen, because he's been away, hasn't played a practice since January 5th, uh, that just putting him back on the court in a game situation uh, might not be the wisest thing to do. He'll have an opportunity uh, to, to rejoin the team, uh, potentially practice on Sunday, and then uh, play Monday against Milwaukee. And he comes back to a very different reality with these Nets uh, than, than prior to his uh, extended absence that James Harden deal had been discussed between Houston and Brooklyn really for a couple months on and off. It did heat up uh, this past week while Kyrie Irving was away. And, and you know, for Brooklyn, listen, it is insurance for Kevin Durant's future with the Nets and, and having James Harden on board. Uh, they don't want to lose KD in free agency, and it comes up quickly. He could be a free agent. All three of these players could by the end of next season. But remember this, too. The Nets' plan was always to use the assets they had built up to go get a third-star player. James Harden happened to become available. If a player, hypothetically, like Bradley Beal was available, and he hasn't been, you know, that would have been a target for the Nets and any number of other, uh, you know, big market teams in the league. But right now, you know, Kyrie Irving returns to a three-man uh, starry cast here, unlike we've really seen here uh, in the modern era of the league in terms of trying to figure out how are they all going to fit together? How is this going to work? Yeah, well, we're going to find that all out on Monday. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more with Adrian Wojnarowski. Uh, let's get into what this big three is going to look like on the court. We know so much about offense, but they say defense wins championships and every single NBA champion since 2003 the Spurs, they ranked in the top 11 in defensive, defensive efficiency. It's hard to see this group doing that. The Nets currently ranked 13th, and that was before acquiring James Harden and sending out their best rim protector and Jarrett Allen. But how does this offense work? Let's ask James Harden. I can't predict how it's going to go. Um, Kyrie might score, you know, 10 possessions in a row. You know, KD might score 10 possessions in a row. Like, they're, they're more than capable of that. And I'm fine with that, you know, because we're going to be winning and it's going to be good. So tomorrow we'll see and it's, it's going to be fun and I'm excited about it. How would you describe your conditioning level now at this point in the season? Great. <laughs> conditioning doesn't matter if you can score on the court. <laughs> Jalen and Jay Will are here with us now. Jalen, I want to start with you. Katie, Kyrie and James Harden. How does this work on a court? This is about to be a new era version of what we saw when LeBron James joined Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in Miami. I'm not saying they're going to win the championship this season because that big three didn't win it in its first season as well. But I'm interested to see if they're going to be able to win a couple. And it's exactly what the East Coast needed, a villain. You got KD who left the Splash Brothers after winning back-to-back -back finals MVPs and hurting his Achilles. Kyrie Irving left the opportunity to play with LeBron James and the Boston Celtics. James Harden basically told the Rockets, trade me or else. And so these three guys on the same team at the same time, elite playmakers, terrific in isolation, awesome score. James Harden will be the guy to make the sacrifice because he's a terrific playmaker, and Jay Will, he's the one that hasn't won a ring just yet. Well, you mentioned it. Exactly. Those are three of exactly. the top five Jay ISO Rose. players, too. Go ahead, Jay. As I say, exactly, Jay Rose, after being down 3-1 to one to the Golden State Warriors, he had it in his clinches. And I'll say this, there's an element of them that remind me a little bit of your squad, Jay Rose, back in the day. Not from a physicality perspective, but there's a little bit of that Detroit Pistons swagger, right? Like, we, we are the new bad boys of the 21st century, and we're going to do it our way whether you like it or not. And here's how they actually do it on the court, Maria. You move Kyrie Irving off the ball. You give the ball to James Harden. You play fast. Look, if KD gets a rebound, if Kyrie gets a rebound or James, you push it up. You play really fast. 
But if you do get into a half court scenario, I like the ball in James Harden's hands considering he averaged 10 assists, especially this year with the Houston Rockets. And think about this from a coaching perspective. You put a blend. Steve Nash did some work with the Golden State Warriors. He understands that continuity system in which they had with Steve Kerr. Now you also have Mike D'Antoni on the same bench that understands James Harden and also Great understands point. floor spacing. All these guys are multi-dimensional threats. It's going to work offensively. And if nothing else, they're going to win games, what, like 130 to 140 or something like that. We know they're going to be able to score the ball. But the real question is, too, it's not only on the court. It's how these guys function off the court, Jalen. If you had to suggest who the leader of this big three would be, who would you go with? Oh, KD the leader. No doubt about it. When he went to Golden State, he didn't want to embrace those responsibilities. He's the leader. Because you know what, Maria? The last couple of weeks with Sean Marks, Steve Nash, Mike D'Antoni was trying to call Kyrie, and he was sending him the voicemail. He was answering when he talked to KD. They was like, where's your man? And when it was time to bring in James Harden, they was like, KD, what do you think? Because he's a guy, along with the others, that has the chance to leave after this season or so. So KD now, I think, is going to be comfortable being there. He's going to be comfortable being the leader. Now on the East Coast, Man, anchoring what we've seen on the West with LeBron being the king and we know about Kawhi and PG, but how about the Splash Brothers when Klay Thompson comes back? This is going to be... Welcoming back in Woj, Jalen and Jay Will. And Woj, when you think about these two superstars, I immediately think about the Woj pod and all that's gone into discovering the Giannis draft. Uh, what's your reaction to what they've been able to do so far this season? Well, it's, it's really remarkable to think, uh, Maria, back to that 2013 draft night. Uh, Giannis's agent, Alex Saratsis, was trying to get him to number 16 to Atlanta. He was very worried, though, about Dallas at 13 because Donnie Nelson, their GM, loved Giannis. In fact, in the draft room that night, uh, Mike Procopio, who was a, a front office uh, uh, slash coach at the time, said to me you know, that Donnie wanted to draft him, told those in the draft room, he reminds me of a young Dr. J, but the, the Mavs were headed into free agency. They wanted to get Dwight Howard in that uh, summer, and so they needed cap space. They traded the pick, and obviously Milwaukee took Giannis Antetokounmpo with the 15th pick in that draft. Later on, obviously, Donnie Nelson. He will be remembered, though, for drafting Luka Doncic. <laughs> well, we know what Luca's been able to do, obviously, had a huge season a year ago. But, Jay, well, what does he have to do this year to walk away with the MVP trophy? You know, bar an injury from, from last year, you know what I mean? Like, he, he was right there. He was right there. And, I, look, Giannis, I, I think it would be hard for Giannis to surpass what he did last year. I, I just think statistically he was exponentially better than what he was the year before. And I think the one thing that kind of lingers over Giannis is the fact that he has not won a chip yet. I know this is a regular season of war, but it feels a little bit awkward not to bring uh, you know some kind of feeling into it knowing that Giannis hasn't accomplished the ultimate goal yet. Maria, my eye is set on LeBron James. Year 17 in the league at 36 years old, has the Lakers off to the, the best record in the league at 10 and three undefeated on the road and the fact that he's averaging 24 8 and seven and a half at this juncture of his career and hasn't taken his foot off the gas still wanting to prove he's the best player in the world i think it speaks volumes about how lebron is going to attack this season on the way yeah he always has something to prove but so does Giannis. i mean obviously he wants a championship but he wouldn't be mad at a three-peat though jalen what would he have to do to walk away with the award three years in a row and these are vastly different candidates and Giannis will have to do something that has never been done in league history, like put up 35, 15, and like five. Like he would have to go crazy with a couple of blocks and a couple of steals. And they've had the best record a couple of years that he wanted. So that means voters get fatigued. Luka's going to be a better story. They were six seed last year. He became a top 10 player. Porzingis is going to have a lot to do with whether he's actually able to win it because to me, Luka's going to have to put his team within the top four, at least of the Western Conference. Teams are going to be separated by one or two games, but they at least got to be amongst those top teams. And Jay brought in LeBron James. I just want to acknowledge two more candidates. One is international. 
Can the Joker get some love, Maria? <laughs> You're giving him love right now. Yeah. In assist, <laughs> spinning baseline, whoa, dunking backwards. He's balling for the Nuggets. And I got a dark horse for you. Kevin Durant. Didn't they just add James Harden to go with Kyrie Irving? Isn't he coming back from an Achilles injury? We love a great story. And now we got something to watch on League Pass every night Eastern Standard Time. So don't...